Dr. Julie Ann McFan, the creator of Grandma's Sewing Cabinet, and this is our first video for our How to Make a Skirt Pattern Sew Along. And I know it seems weird having a sew along when we're making a pattern, but we're going to do some test fitting and making and tweaking to make sure it fits. Somebody asked me, who is this design for? Well, the answer is everybody because what we're doing is creating a custom skirt that fits us perfectly. It's kind of like those women who have all of their clothes custom made and it seems like all their clothes look fabulous on them. Well the reason is because, is because it, their measure, their the clothes that are made, for, oh, let's try this again, that the, the clothes that they have made for them um, go around all of their curves and all their flaws and all their good things perfectly. Um, when we did this with the sewing group, even though we had a bunch of different ladies with different figures and they were all of a certain age, everybody was amazed at how good the women looked when they made their test skirt because it was made specifically for them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make something called a sloper. And this is what a sloper looks like. This is the back of the skirt, and this is the front of the skirt. And these are essentially the basic building blocks for all of the skirts we're going to make. These do not have any seam allowances. We will add seam allowances to our patterns. But once we make these, then you can make almost any design you want out of these. You just trace them and then you do things to them. Sometimes you even abuse them. Let me show you some examples. This is the pattern for a pleated skirt that I made. You see how, see these white stripes? I traced off my sloper and then using the technique that many sewers already know the slash and spread method, because that's how we make our pattern adjustments. I just slashed the pattern apart, the sloper, trace sloper, and made it into pleats, into a pleat pattern. And that's the front. Or, again, I traced my sloper and I made a flared skirt. And I did it, I traced it, and then I kind of did some tilting. And that's all there is to it. We can make all sorts of designs out of that. I'll show you how to do it. Let me get these out of the way. Well, there's some tools that we're going to need. And so this video will go over some of the tool, um, all the tools we need. I need to do it fast because YouTube says I only have 15 minutes and I've probably already used up five minutes just talking. The first thing we need is what's called dot paper. I don't know if you can see this, but there are these little, um, on mine, numbers and letters in one inch increments. Dot paper could have dots on it, could have little, those little asterisk things, it could have numbers, it could have letters, it could have all sorts of things. But the main thing is they are in one inch increments. And we use these to make our straight lines and then to also help guide us when we're doing our curved lines. If, if you're coming to the Sewing Guild conference this summer, you can get a 10 yard roll for, what is it, about $5, $8, something like that, uh, at one of almost any of the shops in the garment, in the fashion district. That's, uh, I go to a place called Ace Thread to get mine. Uh, if you order it online, you end up with like a 200 yard roll and it will take you forever to go through it. If you don't have that, that's not an option for you, then you can actually make your own dot paper using your computer and print it out. Just make sure that the increments are in one, are one inch apart, uh, horizontally and vertically. In fact, I'm sure that Excel and numbers, 
probably both have templates that somebody's made somewhere um, that is in those increments. In fact, it can be graph paper in one inch increments. In fact, let me show you this. This is an easel pad left over from my full-time professor days. And it is essentially graph paper. And it's, these are one inch blocks. Uh, I got this at just a big box office supply place. And it's not cheap. I think it's like $20 for the pad. Could be more now. I've had this for a long time. But if you have children, this would be ideal. You can set up like homework charts and uh, chore charts and all that kind of stuff using these graphs. That thing's heavy. Okay. Um, our next thing is muslin or any other plain weave cotton fabric. It needs to be plain, plain weave, which means it's like quilting fabric. Um, it does not have to be muslin. Muslin's cheap, and so that's why I say muslin. Um, it, don't use an old sheet, please, because most of the time they're not 100% cotton, but also they have a finish on them. They've got all sorts of things going. Also, they may, the weave may be a bit off because they have been used and so forth. Feel free to use something from your stash that is in a color that you wonder why you are using it. Um, just make sure that it's plain, doesn't have flowers or any kind of print on it because we want to be able to look at the wrinkles and so forth. Um, but you need about a yard of that depending on how wide your fabric is and how wide you are. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, the dot paper you need about one yard long and about 40 inches wide. So keep that in mind if you're going to make your own and tape it together. Alrighty, the next thing you're going to need, and you'll probably have to order this, is called a French curve. Excuse me, it's called a hip curve. These are the hip curves. This one is also called a variform curve. It is very curvy. This is for shapelier women. This one, also called a hip curve, um, by Fairgate, and this one's by Lance, is usually for like juniors, women that don't have as much of a curve around the hip. You see how one, I don't know if you can see that, one doesn't curve quite as much as the other. Um, so you can order these online. It's not going to be more than 20 bucks. Um, I like having them both, but you, if you're a curvier woman, get this one, and if you're not as curvy, get this one. Dritz has one that's called the Styling Design Ruler. Try not to get this one. This costs the same as those metal ones, so get the good one. Uh, one of the gals at the sewing group had one of these, and we had so much trouble with it because it keeps curving, it never straightens out. You need the curve and then have it straight. And we finally gave up using this and she borrowed mine um, for the duration. Um, so if you get this, it's not the end of the world, but just know you may end up getting frustrated with it. Okay, another thing, I accidentally called those the French curve. This is the French curve. And it's see-through. They also have metal ones. Um, I like the see-through one. It looks like an italicized nine. There's going to be uh, graphic design. Also has a French curve that's got all sorts of curlicues. And there's another one that looks like a sled and so forth. You want the one that looks like an italicized nine because um, we'll be using this part mostly. But when we get into um, making patterns for tops, this is actually the shape of your armhole. And this is the shape of a children's armhole. And this is just a hand dandy little thing. So you want the one that looks, looks like a nine. Um, you'll want 
Uh, I, the, this one's an 18 inch ruler. If you have the quilting one, it's fine just as long as you have these little one eighth of an inch increments good solid lines. The quilting one isn't as flexible, um, but I've had students using the quilting one. It's a little cumbersome to use, but it works fine. I prefer to use this, okay? And you can get this at Joann's. Um, I think they also have it in blue, that sort of thing. If you're a teacher, you probably already have a long arm stapler. You're going to need a stapler and staples because we will be stapling our, our dot paper to brown paper to make our patterns and to add our seam allowances. And this is just mailing paper that I bought. I think I bought it at Target, you know, the craft paper. You can get the high gluten paper that costs an arm and a leg. You know, just get this from Target, Walmart. There's, I had classmates who even bought their brown paper from the garden section at the big box um, gar, uh, home, like Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. Okay, so you'll need some brown paper because you'll be stapling the dot paper to the brown paper and that's what you'll need. And to mark it, you'll be needing, this is an awl. If you have, we call it a weapon because it, I mean, it, it's like an ice pick. So if you have an ice pick or some sort of stiletto, um, I know a lot of people already have a stiletto for sewing in tight places, that will work. A really fine point um, Phillips head screwdriver will probably work. Or, I mean, if you have a, a really strong ballpoint pen or something like that, that will punch through this paper then that will work too. But this is how we will do some of our marking um, for like our darts and stuff. Okay, uh, I don't want to miss anything. You'll also need a good pencil, fine point. Mechanical pencil works well. Uh, when I draw the steps, I will be using a marker just so that you can see it. But mechanical pencil is good. Um, I like using just a regular old-fashioned pencil, but I sharpen it like after every um, after every line. But you also need a black sharpie and a red sharpie, okay? And or or pencils, pen, uh, different colored pencils will work. I happen to like sharpies. Uh, scotch tape because uh, we will be closing up our darts and then opening up and all sorts of things. And you'll need our, the usual sewing, your usual sewing kit. And that's it. I hope I did this all within 15 minutes. We'll find out. The next video will be showing you how to take measurements. So you need to find a friend who will help you take measurements, okay? So start gathering your materials and we're going to have a blast. We're going to make a skirt that looks fabulous on you. Okay, until next time, happy sewing.